He said to him, but now your kingdom shall not continue. Well, it did actually. Saul carried on for years, but his kingdom didn't. His rulership didn't. His authority didn't. He was lame. He had nothing. Sput sputtering out, spl uh, out uh, curses against his own son and against his own people. The Lord has sought for himself a man after his own heart, and the Lord has commanded him to be the commander over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Sounds a little harsh and everything, and please let me just get back to what I'm saying. I've prayed for and continue to pray for this president, but the people around him, I'm sorry, they are weak, they are wicked, they are controlling, manipulating, and in the third year he spoke about something taking place. Now, I'm not here as a, as a prophet of doom, but I want to read to you another thing. 1 Samuel 15, verse 1 to 28. Let me tell you the story. And now this is going to take me a few, just a few more minutes. And then we're going to gather together and believe for change. Even right in the beginning, we began prophesying and declaring that this nation will not be sold. Therefore, God said it wouldn't be. But during the process, we have to, we have to watch and see what is he saying to us. God's... There's rebounding, the, com the economy is getting back. It's all because of God's words. That's why. But look what happens here. The Amalekites attacked Israel when they were journeying, when they were on their journey with Moses. And so they had to stop and they had to stand and they'd be, they had to fight these Amalekites because they attacked them from behind. A bunch of cowards. And, and understanding, is, and I'm trying to sort of let you see it you know, so that uh, comparing it, in other words, this is about Saul, but we're speaking about today as well. Saul does a very, very wicked thing. And you hear me today, please, warriors. Saul does a very wicked thing. He doesn't destroy the greatest enemies of Israel. He betrays his own people. Listen to this. God says to, Josh, to, to Moses and to Joshua, after they'd fought the Amalekites. you remember the story when he held up Moses' arms and then the battle would be won when Moses' arms were dropped, that then the battle would be lost? Well, eventually, they, they overcome the Amalekites for that, that small period of time. But God is really upset. And God says to him right way back there, write this down as a memorial. Do not forget this. I will wipe out the Amalekites because they came against Israel when they were journeying. And he says, it'll happen a few generations from now. But keep it, mark it down. I will do it. Well, Samuel, many hundreds of years later, realizes God wants to make that happen now. And he's chosen Saul to do it. In other words, Saul, you are the one chosen. As a man of war, you're the one chosen to wipe out the Amalekites as God commanded Joshua. It's a great mission. It's an incredible mission. And I'll tell you what happened very quickly. He didn't do it. He spared them. Now, you know, he did kill some of the Amalekites, but he spared the king and the best. Now, hear what I'm saying to you. The best of the Amalekites. In other words, he saw good in what God had called evil. Saul saw good in what God called evil and spared them. You don't spare. When God spoke to Joshua and when he went to war, he said, do not leave one of them breathing. Now, it sounds vicious and everything. You've got to wipe them out because your decision is going to make descendants. I don't want them to be alive. I'd want them dead. I want every one of them wiped out, God says. Well, he doesn't do it. And, and this is what I want to read to you so you can see. This is later on now. He doesn't do it. And it's in 1 Samuel chapter 15. He has the command. Now I'm going to read it out of my Bible from verse 1 quickly. The Lord Samuel said to Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people. You notice what God's saying. You listen to his lingo. Stay there. Everyone. Listen to his lingo. He says to him, The Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people. These are not your people. These are God's people. And I, you, I mean, you may think I'm a little too passionate about this, but let me say this to you. This nation is God's nation. They were dedicated. We, they, this nation was dedicated to God. Why do you think I came here? Not only because he called me, he sent me here to be a prophet to you. I came here because of that. 
I came out of a war-torn country where, where, where Africans were beaten down. This nation experienced the same thing. But I came here for that reason. Listen, this, these are not your people. Democrats, these are not your people. And I, I speak to you specifically because they're ruling right now. These are God's people. And he's jealous over them. The Lord has sent me to anoint you king over his people, over Israel. Now, therefore, heed the voice of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, I will punish Amalek for what they did to Israel and how he ambushed them on the way when he came from Egypt. Now, go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have. Do not spare them. Kill everything. Ox, sheep, camel, donkeys, the whole lot. So Saul gathered the people and, and you know the story. He goes there. And so Saul did attack the Amalekites. He did a little bit of work there. But he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. And utterly destroyed everything else with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people. So what's happening is, because Saul made that decision, now the people are also under his blame. Because when, when a king does it, the people are to blame. But Saul and the people spared Agag. And the best of the sheep. And all that was good. There's no good. When God calls something evil, there is no good to it. When God says something is not good, it's not good. And if you call it good, it's wrong. And I'm speaking specifically in this day and age. Islam is wicked. Wicked. They want to take this nation. They want to infiltrate and take this nation. And there's no doubt about it. We cannot compromise. You cannot embrace the Syrian president and reject the king of Israel. The Israeli president. Which he's done. What a slap in the face. What a spit. I, I, I don't even know if everybody's catch, getting it. I'm sure you are. And you'll forgive me if I'm getting a little bit too passionate about it. But I've been in prayer. I'm fasting. This is my third month. I've officially lost 26, 7 pounds right now. I'm not talking about the weight. I'm talking about daily with God. And he's telling me this stuff. And he's saying, this is what I want to do for them. This is what I want to do for America. But somebody's standing in my way. So they spared what they thought was good. When God calls something evil, it's evil. Now, this is what happens. Saul spared them and everything despised and worthless, he utterly destroyed <laughs> Now the word of the Lord came to Samuel. Please hear me. I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king. And he has turned back from following me and has not performed my command. And it grieved Samuel. And he cried out to the Lord all night. And I am, can't even tell you the tears that I've had. And I'm not exaggerating. The grief that I felt when I see what's happening. This nation is one nation under God. Now it's divided. It's afraid. I'm, I'm hearing emails. People are afraid. What is this president doing? I'm not talking about even socialism and stuff like that. I'm talking about with the Middle East. It's dangerous. People are afraid. I'm watching this nation. That, that's, they're losing their boldness, losing their confidence. And I'm, and I'm grieving because God says I'm, I'm regretting. Now you say, well, how can God regret? Don't ask me that question. To ask your brilliant theologians. All I know is this. That's what he said. So Samuel went out to meet Saul, and Saul said, Blessed are you, and goes all this religious crap. And then Samuel says, You have not performed what God told you. What is the bleating of the sheep in my ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, Well, they brought them from the Amalekites. He still won't take blame. He thinks he's done good. We've spared the best, so we can offer it to the Lord. Oh, really? So Samuel said, When you were little in your own eyes, and I say this to you, President Obama, when you were little in your own eyes, were you not the head of the tribes of Israel? In other words, God raised you up to be the head of every state in this nation over the tribes of America. You were little in your, your own eyes, but did you not understand that it was the Lord that anointed you? Do you remember the dream you had when you were young? You were 16 years of age and you had this dream and you thought it would happen. And you made some promises to God. You better listen. God has not forgotten. And he says to him, Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they are consumed. One of our duties is to stamp out the rage of Islam 
against and you say, well, Obama's standing against them. Yes, yes, he's doing it with his with his mouth. It's not much not much action there. Let me tell you something. It's getting worse. I'm not saying they're going to come take us over. I'm just telling you, when you want to spare them, and there's a feeling of uh, compromise, we shouldn't be so harsh and all this. Huh. Against that against that spirit, you don't play around with it. Then Samuel says to Saul, why did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said to Samuel, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission which the Lord sent me to and brought back the Agag, the king of Amalek. But the people took the plunder. There he goes again. Do you hear what he just did? He played the people again. The people took the plunder, the sheep and the oxen, the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed. He's lying. He's blaming somebody else. So Samuel said, and I want you to hear this because I'm finishing with this now. I'm tired. I'm worn out. And I'm saying that because I poured out my heart this very early this morning for hours in prayer and begging God, please, I don't want to get up there and do this. This is, I'm tired of, I, I don't want to do it. And then Samuel said, has the Lord is great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, and it's, a, it's the scripture I use and I want us to do it today on behalf of America. To obey is better than sacrifice and to listen better than the fat of rams. And listen to this. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because you've rejected the word of the Lord. He has rejected you from being king. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Wherever you are right now, just stop. Close your eyes. Something beautiful is happening. Under the very rulership of Saul, who refused to do what God wanted him to do and what America requires. We have to we have to we have to change it. Kim Hal. Well, first of all, what did he say to Saul? What did he tell Samuel? He said, Samuel, I have raised up a man and commanded him to be the king after my own heart. The bad news is that it doesn't seem like there's much change taking place right now. Good news is, emerging from this mess is a man after God's heart. Don't get angry with me, please. I'm just telling you what I felt. It's, it's not something I thought up and listened to the news. I barely even, my wife will tell you, I barely even watch TV. I, I do enjoy my life. I mean, I, I, I'm not sitting around praying all day long. But I am aware of this mission that I am on right now to, pr pr to pronounce the word of the Lord. And so I, I'm asking you right now, every one of you, there's, there's hope. God's emerging out of this mess is something huge, something beautiful, something righteous. Even now, God's working. I'm not saying He's not. I'm, I'm addressing the President of the United States as a prophet and saying, I prophesied you in like Samuel prophesied Saul in. Samuel was happy about that. Samuel was happy that God had anointed him as king. Eventually, he, he, he blessed him. Taught him the ways of a king, of a dignitary. And then when, 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 when the Lord was hurt and grieved, so was Samuel. Why? He took the responsibility. I prophesied this. I want you to do me a favor today. I said something to you. And I want every one of you watching me to please participate. Because it's, it's not only very right to do this because of what's happening right now. But he said to obey is better than sacrifice. So many of you, and, I, and he spoke about Saul saying, I forced myself to give the offering. 
I believe that we can represent the United States of America, your country. And say, Lord, you've already spoken so many words. We know something massive is emerging and we want to be a part of that. And we are going to gather around this piano right now, all of you that are watching me. It's so beautiful because you can do a, a, far, a far shot if you want, a wide shot, I should say. You can see we're here at the piano. Come, come, come join me. And, and we're at this piano right now to worship the Lord. And there's, to me, there's nothing more beautiful. Here we go. You can see where we are now. Get a close-up again. We, we gathered around this piano. You are too. How many of tens of thousands watching? You're concerned. But God, you've always, you've always brought us back. You've always, always heard the prayers of the righteous. You have always listened and hearkened you and, and leaned towards those that have called to you. We are praying for this nation. We are praying not only for your inheritance, but for our children and our children's children's children. That's what we are praying for. Lord, as we gather around this piano right now and pray for this nation, pray, Lord, for this president. Lord God, you would touch him, that you would restore, and that, God, you would get to their spirits. But if not, Lord, I know one thing for sure. You're raising up someone that will lead this nation. And Lord, I pray that you would cause that to happen. Now, we all gathered around me. Don't close the computer. Don't switch off. Because we have something highly spiritual to do. God has given you a word. It's very, it's called, the fellowship offering is what I saw when I read with what Saul said. It's called the fellowship offering. In other words, we are in fellowship together. And we've heard the mystery of God revealed. And we know that it's going to benefit us. But now it's time to act. We are going to bring an offering at this altar. The way that you are going to do it, and I want every person to participate, please. The way that I want you to do it is I want you to, you're right here, the screen's in front of you. There's a red, there's my red shirt, there's a red button underneath it. It's a link. And while I sing this song and we worship together, I want you to pray and say, I want to obey you. If it causes, if it makes me sacrifice, that's good. But my sacrifice is going to come out of my obedience. But as we gather around you, I want you to do something holy. I want you to pray and say, I want to, I want to sow into the prophetic word right now. I want to sow into this nation that you gave to us. It's your inheritance, God. And so I'm sowing into your inheritance. I'm sowing into your possession. I'm sowing into this nation. And how am I doing it? Through the prophetic word that's come and giving to the prophet to carry on doing what he's doing. Now I ask you to do that now and let's pray together. Don't stop. Don't, just stop for a few seconds. Don't walk away. And pray this prayer. Show me what to give. This is going to be an act of obedience in the face of disobedience. We've heard that there is disobedience in rulership. We are going to contradict that by doing something out of obedience. To obey is better than sacrifice. Now I'm going to take something worthy of this word, knowing that you will redeem us, and I'm going to give to you as you tell me. The Holy Spirit, tell them and show them what they must do. Right now. now. As you hear him, I want your action to be placed with your faith. Faith without works is dead. Let's give a fellowship offering, okay? This is your fellowship. This is your fellowship right now. Some of you go to churches, and I always encourage that. But if you're not, and this is your fellowship, then so into it. Say, Kim, carry on doing what you're doing. I need your encouragement too. Now go ahead and do it.